So question 20, this is about a karate club that wants a website so that members can view techniques and find information about the club. We've got a wireframe and a low fidelity prototype. So left hand side we've got a wireframe, right hand side we've got a low fidelity prototype. Now we see one of the kind of key differences here is that I've just got a, an X symbol showing where it would go, so that's showing me the layout, but in the low fidelity prototype I'm seeing the actual picture. And where I've just got links here, that are kind of generic, then over here I've got the actual text and the same thing with the paragraphs. So explain why wireframes and low fidelity prototypes are used when designing a website. There's multiple answers I could give here. The easiest one with a wireframe would be I'm showing the layout or I'm showing where the content would go on the page. Because if I forget about the low fidelity prototype for a minute, just look at the wireframe on the left, I'm seeing like a block where the text would go, I'm seeing where links would go, I'm seeing where a picture would go. I don't necessarily care about the the detail of what's inside that for the moment. A low fidelity prototype is actually going to look more like the finished thing. So we could show the complete content to the client, including, the, for example, the actual pictures. Um, we could say that it lets them see what's called the look and feel. And that means you get an idea for things like um, colours and fonts and generally how a website is going to feel. It means that you're going to get feedback from the client as well. Or from your end user. So all of those would be things that you could say about a low fidelity prototype. Now this is a navigation structure and I quite like this question because it's laid out in a slightly different way. We've got four pages here from the website and on each one what we're trying to do is pick out where there are links. So for example, this goes back to the home page um, and we can see that each of them has got back to the home page. And then I might want to do a little bit more on it. I could say right we've got this link that says kicks. So that's going off to this page and I've got punches is going down here and sparring is going down here. So I can see that I'm going to have my home page and then I'm going to have pages for punches, sparring and kicks. I use a little bit close together but I'm trying to give myself space and I want a double headed arrow here because the links are going both ways there's a link back to the home page on each one now there's one other link in here so if we look and I'll get a different pen color for a minute got this bit here foot sweet demo so click the link to go to the Karate Association for a demo. So if we're going to another website, then that's an external link. So go to means that that's external. So then we're going to have an external link to the Karate Association. But instead of this coming off the home page, look what page this is going from. So it's going from the kicks page. So we're going from the kicks page and that's a one way arrow because that's an external link. So quite often when you've done these questions and when I did the 2022 one, it's more like a description that you get. Right, last thing, we've got some code from the pages, so I've got an HTML file and a CSS file and you see we've got dot dot dot, so it's only part of the file that I've got here. The club has decided to make the lunge punch their training focus. To show this, they want the heading below to be read, so this heading, they want that to be read. Now let's find where that is, so that's this. Write CSS class, I'm going to underline the word class here, to style text. 
and edit the HTML to implement the change. So we've used this, this class, right? If I had just said that I wanted h3 to be red, well, the problem with that is that would affect all of the h3s on the page. So if I use a class, then I'm only going to apply it to this one. We've got this edited HTML below, so if I want to then insert that into my HTML, I'm rewriting that line, so h3, and we're adding in there class equals focus, so that it now belongs to the class and that this is a CSS rule that's going to apply. 